um, our first, our gardener, Jamie, is going to give us a few tips on ordering plants for spring planting. So Jamie, here we are. <laughs> okay, um, uh, you can just go to the next slide. So um, I have, uh, I, I'm somebody who uh, would go into the uh, plant store and uh, not have a plan when I went in. So this is sort of whether you purchase your plants and go in yourself or, or this is really geared more towards um, ordering them with, you know, COVID safe environment. But before you do purchase your plants, these are some things you should do. You should, um, you know, consider the light, the soil and the water conditions in your own landscape where you want to add some new plants. So you, unless you're going to tear everything out and start over, it's probably just supplementing what you have. So you have to consider, do I, you know, I need something in the shade area or I need something in the sun area or it's wet there. Those are the things you should think about. You need to know your own uh, hardiness zone and we're 7A here. And, um, and also you, I am trying to uh, move over to buying all native plants. So uh, it's better for the pollinators and they're, they're from the region. So it's better to buy those buy native plants. So I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but I just wanted to say that. Then you should do some research on what plants you would like to put in. So you should do some research in books and catalogs online. You can visit gardens. We could go to Kathy's house. It looks wonderful. And uh, gather information about the plants. And uh, the things you should really think about, and I'm guilty of this, I have things that are bigger than I should have planted in a spot. We probably all do. But you should look at What's the size at the maturity of the plant? When does it flower? The bloom color, does it fit in? Do I wanna have successive bloomings in my garden? You know, so I have something in April and something in May and, and do, are they all gonna to fit together and look pleasing to, to you and to others? And then what kind of uh, maintenance and care? So these are informations, you should do your homework before you go. Then once you have a list of, plants that you would consider putting in in the different areas. Um, um, and I think one thing I didn't mention from above, it, light is really important. So you ought to consider where do I need these in my garden? So you make a list that fits your own requirements, what you like, also fits your budget because things can get very expensive. And are they suited for my space, the light, the soil and the water conditions where I'm gonna put them? And then don't impulse buy because then you'll you'll come back and you'll have something that may be too big or or uh, you know it's just it's not going to work. Or obviously you'll plant it. So these are the things you should do before you in person buy or before you buy online. So next next slide. So if you go in person, um, you can you know buy from the garden center like Merrifield or DePaul's or Cox's. You can go to the home improvement stores like Lowe's and Home Depot. You can go to retail stores like, I, I think, I don't know if Target has plants, but I know Walmart does. Or you can go to the big box stores. And so you go in person and uh, you pick, pick things out. Although Yvonne said that, um, that she did call her order in to Merrifield and went and picked it up. So she didn't even have to go in the store. So that's something you should, uh, you could consider doing if you, if you don't wanna go into the store. Um, but, what you, but if you do go to the store, these are just a few little things that you should do. You should inspect the plants, make sure it has a good solid root system. Actually, some articles I read said you should actually turn the pot upside down and pull the plant out. I've actually never done that. And, uh, and I don't know that the stores would like you to do that, but that would tell you how healthy the roots are, if it's very pot bound, what color they are, is it rotten in there? Are they the right color? They should be white to light tan if they're healthy. But anyway, I'm not advocating that. I'm just telling you that some people suggested doing that. You wanna make sure it has a vibrant, healthy foliage. So no holes, no disease, you know, bugs on it. I mean, some could be beneficial, but generally you don't want to, uh, you want them to look really good. And, uh, you also want to uh, see the suitability for your conditions. Um, you know, should I, you know, can I use this? 
And then um, you can buy smaller plants. Lots of times you'll go in and you'll be um, captivated by the beauty of the flower and it's all in full bloom, but now it's blooming now and you want it to bloom in your garden in a week or two. So you might go with a smaller, you, you can buy smaller plants if you want it to bloom later. And you could buy a larger plant. And I, I actually look for plants that have buds on them so that when I plant them, then they'll bloom when I bring them home. And uh, you also want there to be a proper uh, label on the plant. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, we've all looked at these, I don't know how they get everything in those tiny little uh, labels, but the plant name, usually the botanical name, the common name, it gives the hardiness zone. Uh, it, and generally it tells you how wide, how high it can get at maturity. That's really important. It tells you the light requirements um, in my yard, that's very important, and what the watering needs are, and just general plant instruction information for planting it, and when it would flower, and it would flower for a period of time. Next slide. So, so, but what you can do is you can order from plant growers and nurseries online, which is the COVID-19 safe thing to do these days. And I think the probably the most important thing is to pick the right producer, and um, and that's not an easy thing to do if you're if you know if you've never ordered from anybody before. So I generally have um, I've I actually haven't I think I've only ordered once online plants, but uh, I'm actually in a garden club, a local garden club, and I'm actually ordering plants now for our virtual sale. And so I, this is very. Um, uh, apropos this topic right now. But um, when you can, what I find the best thing to do is get recommendations from others, uh, whether they're, you know, people in, you know, the Master Gardener Club or, or, you know, anybody who's ordered online and they would have probably have growers that they recommend. And uh, that's probably the best because you know the person, you say, oh, I've had good luck or These, this uh, producer wasn't very good. So I'd say that's important. You can also read the re customer reviews um, uh, online for some of these and see what the customers say. And what I would suggest that if you're gonna order from somebody that you don't, that you don't have a lot of feedback for, from, you might just order a few things to begin with and then, um, do it as a trial. Instead of spending hundreds of dollars, maybe you should see what you get. So that would be the last of the things if all else fails. Um, so when you do order online, you want to consider the proper planning times and hardiness zone. Now, I would say if you order from, from locals, you know, within, I don't know, 50 to 70 mile radius in Maryland or Virginia or West Virginia, uh, this isn't, you know, because they'd be very close to your hardiness and when things bloom. But if you would order from farther away, you want to make sure that what you get, when you get it, so you can plan it soon. So that's a that's something to think about. Probably more so if you if you uh, order from a, a a producer that's further away from you. Um, and you might also, if they're far away, you might consider expedited delivery. It might be worth the extra money so that it, the way the mail is these days, uh, depending on how they ship things, um, I would assume they don't ship it in the U.S. Postal Service, but, but anyway, you'd want to you'd want to consider that. The other thing that's very important is you should read what the return policy is and look at the fine print and and would you be able to return it if it was in poor condition when it got to you. And I think that's an important consideration. You don't want to have problems and, and you know, for I would think for the producer, that would be good to get people to come back to you. They could, they could feel safe that if something happened to the plant, you could, re they'd replace it. You also probably would want to inquire if, if pesticides were used. And, um, and to what extent were they used and what types, if that's the case. I, I did a little checking on a bunch of producers and many of them don't use any pesticides at all, but that might be something you'd wanna ask. And it's also possible, uh, more, more than likely, it'll be more expensive than if you were to go buy it some, somewhere nearby in person yourself. So because there are delivery costs involved in it. And I've also talked to people who say, oh, 
I do use this one producer because they have very unusual things that I just can't get anywhere. And so if that's the case, you may have to go to some producer that is further away from you. And then, you know, the delivery costs and the condition of the plant and all those things would come into play. So the next page is just a list of references that I looked at um, uh, when I was preparing this. And I also put uh, some links into Virginia native plants. Um, so that's on the next slide. And I guess these slides will be available at some point, but these are all information on, you know, Virginia native plants. And then just, here's a couple publications on, um, on, you know, plant selection. If you're more interested in looking into that and seeing what else you should look for in your plants. That's it. Are there any questions?